on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. You What's done, going on? Nothing, nothing, you know, my dad. Hey, man, so how you doing? Blessed. Man, truly blessed, right? Truly, truly blessed. Man, if you woke up this morning and you put your pants on your feet instead of on your head, <laughs> listen, man, you blessed, man. We here, man. Say, man, we got a special guest in the house today, man. This guy don't really need an introduction. This guy here, man, like I said, through testing t- trials, you know, some, you know, you just you, you just know that they done made it through. You know what I mean? And, and, and God has a tendency to snatch people out of the fire. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and, and, and it's just so many times we don't recognize it until... After we look back over our life and we see where we came from and where we at now, we be like, man, how did we make it this far, man? Real talk. My guy, Jay Holland, is in the building. Hey, man, I just want to say, man, much shout out to my bro, man. Ever since I met you, you've been A1 since day one. Man. And I want to tell y'all this, man, we are blessed by the best. If we refuse to ever get in this lifetime, settle for less. Hey, man, I agree with that, man. The, the, the thing I know, man, is when I heard this, you know, it's, we going to get into it deep. But but I always wonder when that boy uh, Big Tuck said, my nigga Jay had the jag looking tight. Mm. I didn't know who Jay was, but I, I believed that nigga. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> man, but I just oh, thank man. you, man, for coming on the show, man. It's a blessing, bro, to be able to be in the midst of, like I said, somebody who, you know, you you know already they still got the battle scars. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That they've oh, been yeah. through it just like you. Like, we have battle scars. And, and when God bring you this far and you still here to talk about it, see, a lot of our friends, man, at 35, you start seeing a lot of funerals, man. Oh, you yeah. From 35 on out, you funeral. we going to one this weekend. It's funeral after funeral. You have to be prayed up. Yeah, mm-hmm. and a lot of people not really ready for that mentally. So a lot of times people are fighting a battle just to make it through. And yeah. so, man, for us to be able to sit here and have a a, a, a real, real potent conversation on an August panel like like this <laughs> yeah. one, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Thank really. you, Jay, for coming on, man. Man, it's my pleasure, man. For real, for man, real. You know, and, you can always tell when you're around a good aura. Because yeah. when I first met you, met you, y'all give me such a good aura. And that good energy is what we need because, you know, negative is going to subtract and positive energy is going to add to. Man, you talk about it. But as they say, you can't have one without the other. Yeah, the yin to the yang. Yin to the yang. <laughs> yeah. Man, I just, I, you know me, man, I, I always let you come in on this part, mm-hmm. man, and break it down to try to get that research so we can start from the beginning, right? Yeah, yeah, we want to take it back, way back. <laughs> Already, we want to know um, how was it like growing up where you were growing up. How you started off because, as I said, as children, you know, you start out innocent, but we develop or into someone else as as time go along because of influence, whether your environment, whether people. I mean, just anything. So I wanted to know how you were raised, your mom, dad, community, the whole works. Okay, well, basically, I was one of them. Uh, you know, I can't say my childhood was all bad. I was raised by a lot of real OGs, you know. I guess God figured, like, since I didn't have a actual father in my life, he gave me a bunch of uncles. And it's crazy how I had four uncles and four aunties. And the four uncles, each one of them was a different dude. One was a pimp and a gambler. One was a straight-up killer. That dude didn't play. Knockout okay. horse and a killer. My other Uncle Pete, he was a con artist and a thief. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. I know where you yeah. at with that one. And the last uncle was a military. You know, he was actually a straight shooter, you know. He didn't do nothing under the table. He was all on top of the table. But each one of them gave me a different aspect of life, you know. But one thing I would guarantee you, they never told me nothing wrong. They told me the best to their knowledge. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And one thing about it, man, it's, it's the, the OGs and the older people that was before us, they had a different set of rules, man. They did. They didn't go by the same thing we nah, went by. It was a G code. It was a G code. And it, it gets so deep <clears throat> because a lot of times when you start going back so far, and I, I'm a country cat, so I, you go back to foot tubs and washboards. Yes, sir. And I you know go about back that. To, you go back to a place where when you put your clothes in a washer, the washer might not work the whole Me. time. You have to put your <laughs> hand on a stick in there to oh, get yeah. it to go. And then once you get it to go on real Clothesline. Before you do that, though, they had this thing that you pull it through. You push oh, it in. Yeah. <laughs> <ringer. laughs> <remember that. laughs> yeah. So, and, and that was a time where you built integrity with the kids. Yes, People sir. don't talk about this no, no more. No, they don't, But man. Th- this was a different type of way. If we had something 
some of those same machines today, some of our young men would be in a lot different space, bro. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And an iron that you didn't you didn't have to plug in, you put it on, the, the, hot on the hot stove, on the stove mm -hmm. yeah. and you press it out like that, mm -hmm. and it was heavy as hell too. I remember. Sure. I had one. <laughs> I, I had one. I remember. Did you? Mm -hmm. I had one. Man, and I, I think about those times, kerosene lamps, all mm -hmm. type oh, of yeah. stuff that people don't really experience. Where my grandmother stayed. You to this day, there's still not no electricity down at the old home place. It never made it all the way down. We had high lines that went through, mm -hmm. but the electricity stopped at Ain Lee House. Man, shout out to my cousin Charles Rambo. Man, who shout we, out yeah, to yeah. See, we we the Rambos down in the country, oh, and, yeah. and, and basically what would happen is we go up to Ain Lee House to watch TV because we didn't have one, and mm -hmm. we'd have to walk up the road almost about a mile and then peep through the windows and try to try to try to have a good time like that. Then walk home before it get too dark. Man, I can remember that, you know, <laughs> because, see, I really had the best of both worlds. Like, yeah. I can see y'all had, too. I, I had a life that I had in the city. Yeah. But every summer, they sent us to the country. Okay. And then that's where I learned how to actually become a real, to me, to become a real man down there. Mm -hmm. What part? Uh, Louisiana. Hey, that's it. What uh, part yeah. of Louisiana? Man, I'm going to tell you. Have you ever heard of Manny? Manny? What is it by? Uh, I think the closest one would be uh, Pleasant Hill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pleasant Hill. Man, when you go down 20, you start hitting all them little towns, man. They go by fast, man. Yeah, they do. <laughs> then 49, <coughs> as we went to New Orleans, we had to go through that uh -huh. route. And uh, what I liked about that, because the uncles out there, they taught me different stuff. Like, hey, look here. We're going to teach you how to plant seeds. You're going to go out here in this field. You're going to plant seeds. And, you know, then we're going to come through. We're going to till the ground. Then we're going to water it. We're going to learn how to feed horses. You're going to learn how to feed chickens. You're going to learn how to uh, um, feed the pigs slop. It was a whole lot of stuff that I learned out there. Basically, survival skills. Like, if the grid went off right now, they're going to know how to survive down there. And so you keep talking about your uncle. So where was your dad during all this time? Uh, he, was, he was living his best life, you know. I mean, okay. I, I, and we cool now, you know. So I, as a child, you didn't <clears throat> know him, or you he was just not a part of your life? He just wanted, I knew him. Like, I used to see him pass by in convertibles, okay. you know, you know, hanging out with, his, you know, the people he was with. And I used to be like, hey, mom, you said that's my dad, right? She's like, yeah. I said, I'm going to go speak to him. She'll grab me by my ear. She said, hey, if he want to talk to you, he know where you at. Oh, yeah. okay. So you didn't so, get to talk to him. No. Nah. How old were you when you spoke to him for the first time? Uh, 18 when I really actually, you know, that was when my football career was going real good. Mm -hmm. And I was all in the paper. So he was kind of, you know, like that. Kind of oh, one of them okay. Tyler Perry moves. On yeah, the I, was about to, I was just about to say that. <laughs> where he came, what was that movie called? Where he came there whenever <clears throat> he was. Um, the, 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 they had that other guy that was really a, 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 a basketball Fox. player. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, was, yeah, exactly. That yeah. one. Yeah. Right. yeah, that was a good movie. And then the mm -hmm. boy ended up getting shot, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it, it had some good parts in there, man. I so love did that you, movie. So did you, so what did you say to him and what did he say to you? I was like, basically, I was like, where you been, man? Like, you know, what's up, you know? And he was like, well, you know, you know, everybody had a different version. So sometimes, you know, it's their version, this person's version, and, and, the the, truth. and the truth. So you know how that go. And um, but y'all are good now. You built that relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I ain't gonna buy him no roll or nothing, but you know, <laughs> but I definitely, uh, you know, I get him some of these. That's that's my pop. We good. We cool. So you have children of your own? Uh, yes, ma'am. Did you ever find yourself overcompensating for? Oh, um, uh, of course. And I had actually had one of my daughters. I was talking about this earlier. She said. Dad, I think you kind of messed us up. I said, how's that? She said, you gave us too much. Too much. She said, you should have whooped us more and gave us less. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's dope, man. But that, a lot of people fall in that trap, though, because they didn't have, so they comp overcompensate with what they didn't have, thinking that that's what their children need, but it's not always. And it's not. My mom, too, I'll never forget one day, I was going to go drop off like $500 and some, some Jordans, you know, like to the kids. And she said, uh, when you gonna spend some time with him? I said, well, I got I to gotta grind. I got to, you know, mm -hmm. I got to provide for him. And she said, well, she said, I'm going to tell you like this here, son. Uh, it's more to being a father than just buying a pair of Jordans and dropping off four or $500. And I thought about it. She said, like, they need you. They need that time. Throw a ball around with them. And at the time, I wasn't really listening. But as you get older and they get grown, you be like, wow. You know, I gave the streets everything I had. And my kids got the crumbs. Mm -hmm. But didn't you say your dad used to ride <clears throat> buying certain cars? So did you see yourself somewhat in your dad as you grew older? You know what? You see him, what I'm saying? Yeah, me yeah, and him born on the same day. We both born on April the 10th. Wow. wow. And Mama said she tried to hold me in. She did not <laughs> want me to be born on his birthday. <laughs> I love it. Like I'm not gonna give him that. 
<laughs> no, but it's but it's so crazy because then your dad didn't spend that time with you because he was always moving and shaking. But you turn around and you didn't spend that time with your family. You're out there grinding and hustling for them. But when I think about someone overcompensating, I would think that they're overcompensating because I didn't get that time with my father, so I'm going to spend as much time. I'm going to be in their business all the time. I would think that's the way. I mean, but in my case, it was more like I, I didn't have no financial support. So I was okay. the kid that had one pair of pants and three shirts for the whole year. I had so that's the pro, how you try the to pro wing, so I was like, I'd rather bust my tail, mm-hmm. and so they they won't be the out, you know, the right, outcast. outcast. And at least I want to do that. And I know I wasn't gonna be, you know, I could sit back and love on them all day. But love at that time, I know like love wasn't gonna pay no bills. Mm-hmm. Love wasn't gonna get them everything they need. Love wasn't gonna pay for, uh, you know, the lessons they need to go to this and go to that and football and you know different stuff they needed. Wow. Um. Just just um. When you was coming up, let's let's get to like how did you end up in the streets? Like just the the whole street category of uh, just uh, you know the hustle mentality. How did that come about? You know what I mean. I ain't gonna even lie to you. I used to really be like a say no to drugs type cat. You know, I was you know positive. You know, playing football, working working at the pizza place, washing dishes. You know, I was a, a, the average Joe Smuck. You know, I was just I was on the program. I was on the hamster wheel. I hate work. You can get it if you work, you know, type person. Up you know. to what I mean, age? Now, let me Up say to this. what age? I want to say this before I go any further. That's what that's what uh, my boy Dre came out. I still I still express that I don't smoke weed or cess because it's known to give a brother d- brain damage. Yeah. But then the next album is Chronic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get Because yeah. the money had to, it switched. Yeah. So the mentality was like, dang, we got to try to figure this out. Now, everybody going, it's cool to, 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 to put a, a, a big no old marijuana leaf on here. Now, it was Say No to Drug campaign. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you about how that goes. See, our, our ego is our worst amigo. Wow. Especially when it comes to us men. Wars were started behind egos, behind this woman liking you, but she don't like me. And i never forget, and I don't want to do too much cussing, but i never forget, I watched a, a video one time. A white lady asked Luther Campbell, Uncle Luke, she say, what is the difference between a, a B and a an H.O.? And he said, uh, well, he say, uh, a H.O. is somebody who screw everybody. He said, a B is a H.O. who won't give you none. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and, and, and so what happened to where you seen yourself spiraling out of control, you know, to where you... Um, in the street life, you know, to where oh, yeah. where you hit that bump where you where you knew, you know, it was heavy. But then a lot of people were depending on you. Yeah, because what you end up doing, you put yourself in a position where it's like you become a quarterback. It's depending on your position, and you know, I was a quarterback, so I don't know if I got sacked, my whole team lost. Yeah. So and it was like I took on all that pressure, and it's like I really started off. Uh, I ain't gonna put my all out there because he saved now, man. <laughs> it uh. He was. I used to see. I used to drive him to go mm-hmm. do what he do, make a drop. So whatever. it was like, and I was like looking at. I'm seeing all this money they spend. I'm like, oh, what are y'all doing spending all this money for? He was like, well, nephew, you know, this is what it is. I say, so what is that right there? He say, this is what I smoke. I said, okay, what did you pay for that? He say, I paid fifty bucks. I said, okay, what are the little bitty pieces? You know, he was like, oh, those are worth ten. So I count them. I say, so that's like 120. I say on the, you know, you're like, yeah. I say, so you spent fifty dollars, you made 120 dollars. Changed my life. I think me and your story is somewhat the same. <laughs> I was like, Shh, oh, let's say no to drug stuff went out the door for me. I'm like, say, man, this dude, man, this yeah. is some profit. Yeah. And for I know it, man, it's like I heard Biggie saying one of his songs. He say, I've been in this game for years. He said it made me an animal. And so for you know it, you become so greedy. You ain't no better than the people that you. That's Ooh, right. I got greedy, and I was out of control. I wanted to make up for everything I didn't get as a kid. I tried to make it up. Yeah, yeah. Being that part person that 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 understand that uncle that our stories are so similar, man. You know, uh, we seen these guys back in the days. Uh, some of them that was in the South, uh, the Lonnie Sanders, uh, yeah. R.I.P. the Lonnie Sanders, man. R.I.P. You know, uh, different people that 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 I knew back in the day had a son named Bobcat. Bobcat's still around. Yeah. Uh, but at any 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 rate, wait, well, you know, you would see these cats coming three, four Cadillacs to the country, and then we was in the country doing our thing, and 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 then when you see these things, and you and you start to understand, you know. Uh, 
you know, man, how this money is. These are financial gains, you know, because hip hop really done cultivated to something else for our younger you for our young youth, which I'm happy about that. But yeah. during the time we talking about our hip hop, <clears throat> our entrepreneurial spirit came through drugs. Yeah. And so we was able to hustle and make ends meet. Like you had never heard of somebody hiding eight and ten thousand and getting up to a hundred thousand in the roof as a young man. Yeah. And, and nobody ain't seen this kind of money. And then when you do this and then everybody else around, they think you the man. It's a, it, the whole process of them, the aura when you come in the room or if you fit to pull some money out and you at the stove, yeah, everybody know yeah. you the man or if you the only one with the sack. Everybody know you the man and yeah. everybody respecting you, man. And you feel like the president of the United States. If you, I don't know how he felt, but just you feel like you're in charge. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's a rush. Yeah, it gives you, you transform from being an average Joe Smuck to now you the man. Yeah. So it's like going from, you know, you being the dude uh, that's washing dishes to the dude owning the whole building. Man. So you it's like it. a, you know, it's a sense of power, you know. And sometimes, you know, what I didn't learn, I didn't know then that I know now, with a lot of power come a lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. And then you look up, man, you making decisions that's changing people's lives, you know. Yeah. But yeah. how much does um, hip hop have to do with, um, what what you were doing back then when oh, you listened man. to that music? Man, I <laughs> man, I remember listening to that Scarface. I started a small time dope, dope gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, say, man, I'm never you know broke, that, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you listen to that Ice Cube, you know, different stuff. Yeah, you know. once upon a time in the projects, yo, I damn near had to wreck a hoe. Yeah, I not, yeah knocked on the door, who is it? As Ice, Ice Cube come to pay a little visit, visit to you. You know what I'm talking What's about? What's up with them dudes Niggas in, in the, the parking, parking lot? lot. I because said, because it, it gets sparked a lot. lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you go through these things in your head. And, and you then, start living it. Then you start living it. We saw. We, so we, it has a lot to do with oh, how you. Of course. I, yeah. I'm not going to sit back and lie. I'm in music, you know. I'm not going to lie. That music was influenced. Yeah, and it still I'm is. not going to say that it made me do that, but it right. just give you that. Like, man, man, I want this. I want this all this what I'm hearing them rap about, you know? You know, and that was, and, and I'll say this, you know, there was times when certain things soothed that whole, that 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 whole gangster image. See, Too Short would come through and say, I'm a player, and I'm playing yeah. just to play. And, and it would changed. mellow you out. It did. People don't realize this yeah. whole music was a roller coaster ride. It sure you could was. You could ride with a Luke, and you didn't think about no drug, because you were thinking about getting woman. a woman. You did so what I'm all saying. these different phases was, some of them was Plan good, some of them was bad, but all of them was being it, a young person necessary. coming up in this necessary. It was unnecessary. Yeah. And also, the same dudes that, that uh, you know, you listen to Face, and they also kept me close to God. That's it. Listening to uh, Face, he he always said he was very. Spiritual. I never seen a man cry till I, I seen a man, man die. die. You know, it was stuff like that that yeah. would put things. So, and that was a different type of music because today's was. music is not like that. It's more. It's more yeah. everything you gotta you gotta you stepping. Yeah. You outside. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it's a whole different time. And but then there are some artists out there, but they oversaturate the market with the other stuff to where you don't get it unless you seek and search for it. It yeah. is out there. It's oh, just yeah. a lot of other stuff around you. Yeah, do a lot to get yeah, to, to it. Yeah, to get to it, yeah. man. So j just uh when you cuz I see the necklace this Shice House uh yes, record. Yes, sir. Okay. House record. What what uh, well, Before you get into that, um okay. with being doing what you did, what changed your life? What made you stop? Uh, because really I had the mentality I was like I'm gonna do this till I get killed or, right. or get Dang. a thousand which mostly 90% yeah, of or them or get a thousand years whichever mm -hmm. one came first right. I was like I'm gonna live it up I'm gonna ride this horse till the legs fall off exactly and uh, basically what ended up changing me is uh, send a lot of people you love die send a lot of dudes I got an arm full of tattoos of dudes I used to run with on a daily and you look up and these people start disappearing and then you start thinking I could have changed a lot of this had I been a better influence, you know. Then you start seeing these kids, and uh, I'll never forget one time, it was uh, a dude, he used to bring his daughter with him, you know, to do what he did. You know, it hit my heart, because he dragged this little girl with him all the time. Do you remember, remember how old she was at that time? I mean, she had to be about four, three. Okay. And I remember telling him one day, I don't know, some just, you know, first, you know, I had the mentality like, oh well, no, it ain't mm -hmm. me, that's him, that's on them. And that's BS. It's on you. If you have a chance to do something, you need to do it. Right. When God puts something on your heart, you better follow it. Otherwise, he's going to punish you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I felt it on my heart. So I told him, hey, look here, man. This your last time, dog. You better not bring that little girl back out here. You finna not grab him. Mm. You finna go get a job. You know, ooh. 
I said, you ain't finna be out here stealing, doing it. That little girl love you, man. You all that girl got. I said, man, this is it. I said, if I even think I heard about you being in the world, I'm going to do something to you. Man, that dude my right hand. The dude went and got a job working for the city, cleaned himself up. The daughter graduated from school. I know he ended up passing away, but, man, that dude straightened up his act. Wow. And that and, and that and that's amazing because if you didn't do that, you never know where that what? little girl would have ended up. Yeah. You know, he might still have passed away. We don't know, but she might end up in a worse situation because a lot of times we don't live our life for ourselves. We live, live it for others, for our kids. You yeah. know what I mean? You pass it on to other generations. That's really yeah. how we should live our lives. And you just reminded me of another story. I remember I was at a McDonald's one. The same Jag Tuck was rapping about. And I had a candy orange Jaguar, white interior, gold wheels, and Vogue's. So I remember pulling up to a McDonald's, me and some of my dudes, and we going there, we ordering something. And the little youngster was like, wow, this your car? I'm like, yeah. So they run outside, they looking at it. They said, sir, can we take pictures of your car? I said, go ahead, man, I ain't tripping. They went to the, well, that's back when they had the disposable camera. <laughs> they ran to the Eckers or somewhere. I don't know what one of them places. Came back taking pictures and all that. And I never get one of them was like, man, uh, we want you to put us down. We want to we wanna get down like this. And then some just, it clicked. You know, that, that's why I call that God that it mm-hmm. hit. I said, you know what, put you down. What you talking about? Man, we, I said, what grade y'all in? Like, we we juniors. I said, look, I'm going to put you down, all right? I'm going to put you on that flow. If I catch y'all out here in these streets, I'm going to beat y'all down. I'm going to have whoever I'm with beat y'all down. If I even somebody else tell me y'all doing something, I'm going to have them beat y'all down. They were like, but how? I said, no, nah, you keep working. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't, y'all, y'all finna graduate and go to school. Oh, man. Well, I said, oh, right, that's, that's it for y'all. Work up here. That's, that's your only option. Then they were like, they were so scared. And I grabbed them all about it, you know, lift them all up, you know, you know the tough <laughs> yeah, guy yeah, stuff. Yeah, with yeah, them. yeah, yeah. And uh, I never forget, but then I ain't see them, you know, I wanted Years. to them, but I ain't see them for a while. But I kept my ears out, like, y'all, y'all know the little boy. Yeah, they ain't, nah, they ain't been out here. I was at a restaurant one day. This was around the time when all that shooting was going on with the dude, the police down there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I never forget, um, I seen the police pull up. And then I had another car out there at the time. I seen them looking at the car. They come in. They were tactical, you know. So I'm eating my food. I'm, I see them kind of looking. I say, oh, man, here we go. <laughs> I said, here we go. So I'm trying to ignore them. You know, you see them out your peripheral, but I'm like, man, let me just keep eating. So they get their food, and I see them tapping the other officer, pointing at me. I'm like, here we go. Here we go. Then he walk over. They say, oh, excuse me, sir. I don't mean to disturb you. I said, well, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Then he said, oh, did you just have an orange Jaguar? I'm like, here we go. I said, yeah. Why? What's up? He said, you don't remember me and my partner right here, do you? I said, no, I don't remember y'all. He said, we used to work at that McDonald's. Wow. And he said, man, we just want to let you know, man, that talk, you scared us so straight that we were like, <laughs> we're going to be on the other side of this. <laughs> wow. This dude scared us straight. Wow. And he was like, um, we just want you to know, I know it's a lot of bad cops out here. He said, but we, we, we two of the good ones. Yeah. And he said, pray for us, man, because that shooting, which is, all this stuff was just going on. I said, all right, man. Then I uh, gave him like a little, you know, little dab yeah. hug. And they remember so, man, y'all, Yeah, I said, God bless y'all. Y'all be good, man. He was like, all ready. How did that man. make you feel? It, it, it was a different kind of feeling, mm-hmm. you know, because I ain't never felt that. You didn't that. expect it. I didn't expect that. God is something else, isn't he? He is. I, but but yeah. let me ask you this, man, because you spoke on the Jag looking tight. Uh, <laughs> I, this, this, this verse that... We we hear That's so a much. Great. It's a, it's this song in Dallas is crazy on that South Side the Realist. Yes, sir. And when he put you uh in that verse like that, did you know that was coming or did you see that coming? I Were did. you friends with him? Oh yeah, that was my boy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But did Tuck. you see that coming? Uh he told me he was gonna put a lot of us in the song because he was writing it. I mean I was right there when he first started writing it. Okay. And then he was like, he was letting me hear it. He was rapping over the Tupac beat, and I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, that's, 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 that's tight. I ain't going to lie, I didn't think it was going to be like it is like, now. But it, it did. But so you, he was sitting there. How did you and Big Tuck end we, up? We stayed on the same street, and I'm going to give y'all some history about Okay, yeah, I want to hear about, about that. About the mean Eugene. Mm-hmm. You know, he said, moving down's on the mean Eugene. Eugene, yeah. Let me tell y'all about Eugene Street. Three music people came off Eugene Street. Me, him, and the blind Ray Charles. okay. His, he has a house on Eugene Street. They, it's going to be a historical landmark. Really? Yeah. You're talking yeah. about the, the Ray Charles you can, you can Google it right now. Say, South Dallas house that Ray Charles grew up in. It's in South Dallas? It's South Dallas. That was cut out the movie. Are you serious? Serious as a heart attack. How the heck do, do, did they cut that out, and how could they miss that? Who knows, man? 
But you you Google it, you're gonna see it. That house gonna it's gonna be a gray looking house gonna pull up on the corner. And so all uh, and that was Eugene Street. So and 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 did, did he was much older than you. Yeah. So how, when did you find out that they, that was even a part of the history? Uh, I can't even remember. I, I mean, my, matter of fact, my, my, my pops and them, they were like, say, we grew up, I thought he was drunk, maybe making up some stories, you know. And my auntie was like, I used to be teaching him piano lessons. I got two twin aunts. Really? And one of them said, I used to teach him, you know, piano stuff. They weren't lying. That's crazy. I did my research, and I was like, damn, they telling the truth. Wow, man. So when you look back and you think about, uh, you know, that time period where you and Big Tuck and them was together, and and this was going on, so he already was signed to no, uh, no, uh, T Town. No, not yet. He was just he was okay. in the processes of getting all that done. And it's like uh, he really was my actual first artist. Really? So he was Shice your House. first artist on Shy's House. He was my actual first artist. Really? Yep. And, I remember um, we matter of fact, we were the second CD that the Definition DJ DJ Drop put out. Really? We I didn't know that. Mixtape. Wow. So and and so. How did okay and, and so you he was he, how did y'all meet? Uh, we actually we grew up on, we, on the same yeah, street. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But you you seen him as a kid because yeah. you, you older than Big yeah. Tuck, right? So they they just came holler at me and they was like, "Hey Jay, you know, hip us to the game, you know." So I started hipping them to the game, you know, and uh, man, we had some, some some we had some times, man. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, me and Tuck got so many experiences, man. I'm, I'm gonna have to get him on here to yeah. take, and we then we just let it out. He gonna be rolling. He can't come now without you. All right, <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, I just look at like I said, that's that's how I knew Jay. I never knew who Jay was to the day we met, but yeah. I always knew that. I'm like, damn, Jay must have had a nice car. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and he pretty was. much was he seen that evidently on that street when he was there. Yeah, you know, and that's what stuck out to him. Yeah, he's always going to swoop me. That was my boy. That was okay. like my little brother. Okay, like, he's always going to swoop me. So he rode in the day. Oh yeah, plenty of times. <laughs> Plenty of time. Man, that's dope, man. man that's we a- rolled out of town. We man, what they what said uh on the Florida Turnpike, man, we done took that jack all the way out of town. For real? Yeah. So and, and and that's the part that people don't understand. That's that's the part of music that you love. That that it, it sets a staple in history. Yeah. That that you you didn't know it was gonna be that big of a song, but that song is like the main song in Dallas right now. Like when you think of Dallas, that one and and uh 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 that that Tom Tom nigga, I'm from Dallas. Dallas, yeah. And uh, that, that uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that and that uh, 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 Oak Cliff, that's my, my hood. hood. There yeah. are staple songs that 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 uh, even I like that Don Chief, the one where it, where where it uh, dun 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 dun. Him and, yeah. It's him and the road. The yeah. lights. The, yeah, you oh, know. that's a bad <laughs> joke. That's I played a bad that when song. Chief, Chief was over here. I played that song, man. man. Hey, man. That, Chief, that, that, Chief that, stand up dude, too, man. man. I, that, I miss him. He's so late. I'll never forget. I got a Chief <laughs> story. I was at Big T one day. He had on a little uh, Burberry little hookup. Yeah. And I'm walking through. I had my, just I got my shots out of chains made. So I'm walking. He, he spot me. I said, I can see he looking. He's like, Say, man, support me, buy a CD. I say, yeah, all right, I got you. He say, yeah, we support all you Houston niggas, man. We buy all, <laughs> buy all them Swisher House CD. I say, nigga, this shite's out from out here. He say, we're going to support me anyway, big dog. <laughs> he had the little, the little stick in the his stick mouth. The stick in his mouth, yeah. that's him. Yeah. That's a staple. Because yeah. that emblem, that almost reminds me, at first when I started the Clans, I thought of Swisher House. That's the first yeah. thing I thought of. Really? Why did you come up with that look? You know what? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, it was like, I wanted to be like the reason the skeleton head was to represent, you know, like caution, and okay. also represent the bare essence. Yeah, you know, so because the skeleton can't show two faces. Okay, you no, know, when you take that face off, you are gonna see the bare essence of mm-hmm. a person. The house meant everywhere we go is a house. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like everywhere we pre- present ourselves, our aura is our house. So I was like, the reason why I called it shice, I said, check that shice before you enter my house. Wow. Tell it before you go in the house and you. Yeah, dust, dust the feet off. Y'all said, mm. check that shice at the door. Take that two face off. Mm. Come into your bare essence, into my house. Wow. I want to ask awesome. you about, about um, the like you, a little bit ago, we talked off screen about your health. How but before, before you, I, I, that's, I was going to get into that, but I had one more question <clears throat> to ask. Because you're telling all these stories of different people you've met. Out of curiosity, because I have to ask this question, have you ever met Pimp C? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm from the. T- I'm, it's, Whoa, it's, that's it, girl. There you go, man. Now you learning. You learning the game, man. That's all right, right there. I'm a big BMC fan, so and, uh, yeah. If you got something on that, I got to get that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give y'all some history with that. 
we were actually related to Pimp C, and I didn't even know it when he really? was alive. Because you said you go to Louisiana. Yeah. And, and that's our where you family, Our family last name, the main family, when we had a family reunion, is called the Butlers. Okay. A bunch of yellow, you know, they said yellow light and skin. dark, but they all real light skin. And they, you know, they real sassy, you know. And uh, so that's our family last name. Our main family we come from is the Butlers. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pimp C dad, may he rest in peace as well. You know, Pop C. Me and Snake, we was like this one. That was that was like our pop. We called him Pop, man. That was our pop. Okay. And before he passed, he left me and Snake a lot of, you know, stuff mm. too, man. You know, and then, uh, that was Pimp Dad, man. He's telling so many stories about Pimp. Yeah. Did you actually actually ever meet Pimp? You no, know, I did. But when I met him, you didn't know. know. I didn't know. You know, all I know one time I was like I had the little thin beard and I had a mink coat on, had my little brim tilted, and I remember Bum B spotting me one day. He said. He wiped his eyes. He said, "Damn, he boy, thought I it to, was pimp." Yeah, he was like, "Damn, nigga, I had to take a second take. I thought you was pimp." Damn, that's how that, that's how close he, he seen uh -huh. it. Huh? And yeah. I would have never knew that. We was that yeah, that's how he, he used to always dress like that. And, and I had that same, you know, I, I'm gonna make mink coat up. You know, I like to wear that's my how gators you like to and, dress. Yeah, Man. Man. it's in the bloodline. Yeah, yeah. What was uh, what was your what what was one of your biggest purchases, man, when you was in that street life? Well, something that you like you, when you done it, you couldn't believe you had done had that opportunity. Work for one was, was properties too, you know. Okay. But, uh, but Did I, you pay I, cash? Oh yeah, but you know, at the time, I'm not knowing I was making a paper trail. Right. Which wasn't what which good. wasn't smart, <laughs> right. but uh, and also uh, I say like it's buying them rollies and you know like yeah. I, I mean, people spending fifty thousand on a watch that's ridiculous. That's big. You know? mm -hmm. It's really you know we really was tripping, but you know it was a competition. Yeah, I remember I heard Jay Z say one of his jams when he said, uh, "We at each other's throat for the love of these foreign cars." So it's like it was a competition out here. See, there it is again. The music have a lot to do with it. Yeah, so I heard that the money ain't the thing. I think go get some more money. Man, <laughs> listen, man, I ain't gonna lie, man. When and, and it's just being a one that's from back in those days. The names you would hear, you know, you you guys are these guys are staples. The Ray Charles is, oh, and, yeah. the, and the Mexican Roses, and the Kenna yeah. Longs, and the and the, uh, all these you, all these different folks, man. Uh, the history of the, of the streets. People don't yeah. really. You could write a book about it. Uh, it K with the K five K Max, yeah. all the, I'm calling some names now. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Just the real streets. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. And, and and a lot of people talk about it, but they really never really got in the midst of it and was out there in it. It's a different time period, bro. Yeah. And when you come from a place where you had no, I didn't have no buffer. I go anywhere and do anything. Me too. So that make you different at the time that we came up. Yeah, it, it wasn't no hood that I wouldn't go in. Me and, it, and I'm she knows mm -hmm. I'm like that now. When I go to Chicago or wherever, I just look at it as these are my people. So I always go to every hood. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It don't matter if I'm in Vegas. I'm on the west side. You know what? That's how I am, you man. Know? It's but like it's no matter different. where we go. It's different now because you have a family. So when you're young and you have nobody, you don't care about nobody but you yourself, care. you go places that you, you like, you don't care about the consequences or whatever. But when you're with family, you're moving with family, you take certain precautions like, yeah, I'm going to go down here, but it just depends on how it looks if I'm going to stay down here. Correct. When we're to you Chicago, know? right? Right. So yeah. it just depends. But then another thing also is we walk by faith now so yeah. at the end of the day we going with a different yeah, mindset faith, our heart, and right. we, we running around trying to figure out ways to be a blessing to somebody mm -hmm. and not a cursing exactly. during those days uh, you like a guy might ride from Dallas and I this is something you might ride from Dallas to Houston and 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 you got it on your mind. You got it. You like if the law stopped me, I, I'm gonna have to do what I got to do. Yeah. You didn't care because you 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 was that bold to where you would go and come and you might have thirty or forty thousand on you or whatever. You know that they gonna do something to you, but in your mind you say you know what? Hey, no matter whatever. what, it's, it's me or them. Yeah. And, right. and, and and at the end of the day, hopefully they don't stop me. Yeah, and and this was a mindset that 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 you have with you in the streets. Yeah. A lot of people still have the mindset right now. And I pray yeah. for him, man. Cause we I'm have a, to pray for him. I'm telling you, it's an old saying: "Self fool and everything he got a soon part." Yeah, it's, including your life. That's mm -hmm. right. Now we're gonna get into the health. The health, like I like just the, the 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 part of that obstacle in your life as you you know once you them you, at that time you had not already came to like you were go, you were done with the streets. Yeah. And and then this hit you. How was that? How did you gain all that weight, though? You know what? Uh, and how old were you? Uh, isolating myself. Uh, in, I was in my forties, you know, and uh, just isolating myself, and uh, you know, just depression. Yeah, you know, you. I went into my own state of depression. You know, I got to the point where it's like, you're not the it dude out there no more. 
you're not, you know, you still got cars and stuff, but then it's like. Not the type of money that you used to have. Yeah, so you you still got money, but you're just not, you're not relevant. Mm -hmm. So you find yourself, you know, you're just sitting there, you drinking, doing whatever you do, flipping channels, and before you know it, man, the, how how big did you get? How many pounds were you? Five hundred and ten pounds. Five hundred and ten pounds. Coming from how much you? How much were you before? Yeah. Uh, before that, probably about two sixty, two seventy, somewhere. Okay, in there. so you doubled your weight. Oh yeah. And and when you when did you when did you when did your health fail? Like as you got bigger, how, how long was it before your health failed? I was in and out the hospital all the time, but uh, it didn't get real for me because I was staying there about two weeks, staying there a week, come out. You know, the only thing people kept telling me, hey, for a big dude, you got a strong heart, but they say, but you're gonna keep on till you damage it. Them people warned me, you need to lose weight. Your blood pressure too high. Woo 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 woo. You need to lose weight. I'm like I can't wait to eat. That's what, that's the way I'm. You know, I'm being cracking jokes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I never forget one day uh, coming from gambling, me and my uh, me and my lady friend at the time, and uh, I like remember she was like she was a nurse, so she was like she knew the she science. like dude, you need to go to the hospital. I said why? So your lips are turning purple. Mm. She said you're not oxygen. I said let me just lay up on this, this air conditioner. I'm gonna go to sleep and I go in the morning. She said no, you are going now? So really she saved my life because I was gonna sleep it off. Them doctors said if I'd have you wouldn't woke up. I wouldn't have woke up. Cause wow. my body was completely contaminated with, with whatever that was uh, like getting. I had sleep apnea. All the, you know, I couldn't stay awake from drinking all that syrup and couldn't stay awake. You know? So, how long <clears throat> were you that weight for before that actually hit? Like, how many years were you? Oh, five. Man. I probably was coasting about probably about a good two years with two that. Two years. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And so, when you went to the doctor, how long did you stay in the hospital before you could be released? Uh, I put about a two year stint in all kind of rehab and everything, close to two years, man. So it basically, it took you that long to get down there. How many pounds did you lose? Now, now, I went from uh, 520 to how much? Right now, I'm at about 285. Okay. So, somewhere in there, but I know when I got out, actually got out the hospital, I was still about 400. So you still lost. At least you lost some. Yeah. That's I a lot about, to lose. Yeah. So they started you off on a diet in the hospital. Mm -hmm. and, and then they, they kind of went from there because I couldn't walk, talk, eat, or drink. They told how, me. Yeah. How much better was it, though? Go ahead. You said they told you. I don't want to cut you off. A 1% chance to live. That's what they said. They said I had 1% brain function and a 1% chance to live. And, and what, was it, what, was, what was it that was actually wrong with you? Complete respiratory failure. Basically, I was so fat, I was suffocating my organs. So when you would walk, you had to walk on a walker. You had a four-legged walker. I went from the four-legged walker to a cane eventually, but I couldn't even want really to walk nothing there. I didn't like to walk from from my house and you know, from where I was at the bed to the door was a marathon. And did you have you have children at this time? Uh huh. How did your children feel about this? You know, Were they, they always like, "Daddy, you can't. You got to take this weight off." I mean, Were they, they, they used to say it, but you know, I blow it off. You know, like, oh well. And I mean, women used to crack jokes and be like. You know, when you're going to drop them triplets and, you know, I used yeah. to be like, oh, they high side. And, yeah. You know? But now in reality, I was out of control. Wow. And and, and that just a, that's a dope story because to see you where you at now and where you came from, man, that's extraordinary that somebody can do it. I see it on TV, but I really never met somebody that actually was able to drop down <clears throat> like that from a 500 pounds all the way back How down. How hard was it? Oh, I'm still battling. You know, I'm, I'm still in the process of fighting with it now, but... Uh, but I'm gonna tell y'all this. And what's the biggest challenge in doing it? Changing the eating habits more than anything. Changing the whole lifestyle. When you start working out now, instead of just I'm just gonna go out and eat or I'm gonna go to sleep on it. I don't do that no more. I see your gym picture. You sent me a couple uh, of them. I yeah. said that boy getting to it. He yeah. ain't playing. Because I would think that after a certain amount of time of eating a certain way, that you get used to it and not really want the bad food anymore. Uh, I still wanted the bad food, but the more and more I've been winging myself off of it now, like doing the vegan options. They got some good vegan out here now, mm. so you can wow. do it. Just like I know, I've been um, I've been hitting uh, Sankofa. You know, that was one of the first spots I hit vegan, mm -hmm. and uh, the Five Star Grill in South Dallas. Mm -hmm. He has a vegan option that's okay. very good. 
Wow, I, I like it, man, because you you one of those guys that make people know that they can do it. Right. You know what I mean? And that's oh, just yeah. dope, man. And to see where you came from to who you are now, and all the trials and stuff that God then brought you through, because you know God said you fearfully and wonderfully made. He said you are a, a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Yeah. You know these are things that tells us uh, with Him you more than a conqueror. Yeah. These things make you motivated to try to be the mm. best you you can be. And yeah. I think a lot of times people don't really digest the scriptures like they should when you're a believer. Everybody's not a believer, but when you are and you say you believe in God, then you have to start to create this lifestyle that complements what you read. That and way, I think that, way that you helps. Have a, yeah, mm -hmm. you, you're showing them what you're preaching. That's right, practice you what practice you preach. Practice what you preach. Yeah. Yeah. But not only right. that, I wanted to know like after you came out, because when you're in the hospital, you're eating what they give you. Yeah, you don't so have no choice. So it's easier. I still had food stuck in every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> but then once you got out, though, did you have to have support? Did you have to? Who was there for you to help, you know, cheer had, you I, on to do? You know what I had? Man, I had, I had my, my lady friend. She's still hung in there with me. You know, we end up, you know, Busted separating. Up, like, yeah, yeah, but on. but uh, we still good, you know. And uh, her daughter, man, which I consider my baby, too, you know. She was, man, she was there with me every day. I used to tell her, you don't have to be up here. She'd be like, no, I want to hang out with you. Wow. So it's very important to have that support system. Man, y'all better have a support system in order if you go in that hospital. Because if you're in there by yourself, anything can go. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you're messing um, around being a joker dead. And who, you know, the more people they see care about you, the more they're going to work. Wow. Mm -hmm. Man, thank you so much, man, for that story. Now, uh, how can people... Top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Dead or alive. Number one. Uh, I'm gonna go. I gotta get Pac. I'm Pac number Pac. one. N number two. Pac is on that wall over there. I gotta yeah. get pimped. Number up. two. Number two. Number two. I'm gonna say face. 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 My number three. Number three. three. Mm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with Cube. Q, man, that's those are that's a those that's good, a good top yeah. three, man. But I got a mean top ten though. I got I a, uh, 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 we uh, only need we three. We really wanted that that that, that was Tupac, uh, Scarface, mm -hmm. and Q, man, which mm -hmm. is dope that's choices, a, yeah. man. Hey, man, uh, so how can people and, get a hold of you if they're? Was that what you about to? No, I was gonna say, um, do you ever give back, as oh. in like help someone I whether mean, to get get over their weight or get off the streets or just. Help them with your testimony. I mean, people, I, I get it on a daily, you know, uh, and it's like even at my church, I go to the One Rugged Cross, and uh, what we do, we give away a scholarship every year to the, the kids that, you know, that mm -hmm. we deal with. We give them a scholarship so they can go to college. And we participate in that. We give out, you know, uh, meals after church, whatever we can do to help, you know, and then we, have, we have a benevolence fund named after my, my, my aunt, Samara Smith. So we also help people. You know, if they in need, we raise the money and be like, here you go. Wow. Because I really feel that, that that could be your, one of your callings because for the main the stories that you told about helping, you know, just like the two boys who were at McDonald's and stuff <clears> like <throat> that, I guess that scare tactic, you still have that in you oh, yeah. to go out here and help some of these kids. Scare you know, them straight. Get, yeah, scare them straight into becoming someone greater than who they are right now. Yeah, Man. yeah I'm trying to show them. I, I want to speak life over them, not death. Right. So I can't participate in nothing I know going to get your kids, you know. I, I got to ask him about this before we uh, close this down. Uh, OGU, man, how did you end up uh, being a part? I know we, we mm -hmm. were part of OGU, too. But how did you end up meeting with those guys, and, and how did that happen? Just started running into each other doing the same thing. And, and you decided? And then it was like, Jay, come on in. Help us out. Help us you know? out. And they said, you got a lot of influence out there, so come on, man. Man, you know? Jay, man. Jay Holland, man. One and of how brothers. can people reach out to you as – he yeah. was asking. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give y'all that helmet, but I want to leave y'all with this, too, before anything. You know how you hear those stories about people when they uh, have deaf experience and their deaf experiences, they say, oh, uh, I, seen a, I seen a light, or I seen this, or a donkey with wings flow in, and, <laughs> you know, everybody have a different story. And I didn't believe none of them. I ain't okay. going to lie to you. I thought they was hallucinating on meds. I thought they were lying. I just wanted some attention. I'm here to vouch that, hey, man, <laughs> that is definitely a God. And when I was in that coma, I prayed my way out of that coma. I was in a coma for three months. Wow. I prayed my way out of that coma. And I didn't actually see God, but I met Satan. And that's a whole nother story. I don't want to just go in, but basically everything he said, it happened. And people he told me he was going after in that comatic, wherever I was, in purgatory or whatever, he went after. Them. A lot of people, you know, he, he warned me. 
And then also the way I was able to get out of it, I prayed my way. I said, God, I reach out to you. I surrender. I said, I completely surrender right now, God. I said, I don't know what's going on with me, but I, I know I'm not, I'm not here. I said, God, please help me. Don't let me go out like this. I reach out to the hills from which my help comes. Mm-hmm. I said, God, please look out for me, God. I said, please help me, God. And all of a sudden, I felt like a donkey or a horse kicking me in my chest like a boom. And all of a sudden, I felt myself breathing again. I seen a white light stronger than any light I've ever seen in my life. And all of a sudden, I was back. All I could hear was doctors and nurses screaming and hollering. Oh my God, it's a miracle, it's a miracle. He's back, he's back. And I got to looking around, I was like, wow. I said, God heard me. The prayers of a worthless sinner, he heard my cry. Wow. And I leaned over and looked out the window with tears coming out my eyes, and I seen a rainbow out that window. And I knew then, I was like, man, God heard me. And that was my proof that God loved me, even a worthless sinner. He took time and he heard my cry. And he blessed me, brought me back. I said, God, please. And ever since then, I have not taken it lightly by my second chance. Wow. And you know that, what I get that, from that? But that was that? the same time when you had come out of that yeah. sickness. Yeah. Uh-huh. The weight. But you know what I get from that, too, is the fact that you are on the brink of going that way. And a lot of people I hear would say, oh, God can't. I, I've done too much. He he not going to hear me. Oh, he not he going to this. You. I've done too much. I already know where I'm going to go. This, that, whatever. How can he forgive me after I've killed so many people or I've done this, 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 this. And you were right here and he still brought you back this way. Yeah. Wow. And that's what I heard from that. Man, man hey man, it's been a dope segment, man. Hey man, thank you so much for coming on Boss Talk 101. Jay, we love you, brother. All right, man. Love y'all we too, We love man. you, man. And um, we just say, man, if you ever need us or if you get trying to get something out, make sure you reach out to us, man. We here at Boss Talk 101. It's here for the community, for the culture. And Not it's really. just a blessing. And, and you'll be back when Big Tuck come on the show. Uh, yes, sir. That's the only way he gets on the show now. <laughs> Jay, we, yeah, we want to talk about Jay had the Jag looking tight with this nigga <laughs> here. Yeah. Check it, man. Hey, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.